Hi, welcome to my video where today we're going to be talking about ratios and proportions. So let's get started. The first thing we need to know is that a ratio can be written in three different ways. Okay, it could be A to B. Now a ratio is just a comparison of two numbers. It could be more, that's for later on in math. But a ratio right now for us just means a comparison of two numbers this number to this number. So I can set up two numbers, A and B, and I can set up a colon in between them. And a ratio could look like this, three colon four. But we say that as three to four. Okay, that colon just represents the word two. So three to four. So three apples to four oranges. Okay, three boys to four girls, whatever it could possibly be. We're comparing two numbers and we're setting them up as a ratio. A over B. So I could say three to four in this way as a fraction, which is a really common way we often use ratios, which we're gonna be taking a look at very soon. Or I can actually just use the word two. So three, two, four. So three apples to four oranges, three boys to four girls, okay? A ratio is just simply a comparison of two values. And for the most part, we generally use them in this fraction form. Now, there are four ways to determine whether or not two ratios form a proportion with each other. Now, a proportion would mean that one ratio is equal to another ratio. So a really basic example would be that one half is equal to four eighths because one half and four eighths mean the same value. They both are half of something. They both would have the same decimal value. They both simplify down. Four eighths would simplify to one one, eight, uh, one half, and those are going to be some of the ways we're going to be able to check. So I've got four strategies here where if I gave you a set of two ratios and I said to you, hey, do they form a proportion? You could do one of these four strategies. And sometimes I pick and choose different strategies when I'm doing my own problems. Um, sometimes I use the same strategy over and over because one of these is going to work no matter what. Actually, two of them are going to work no matter what. But you may find that you have a particular favorite. So the first one, strategy one, is to find a common multiplier. And this always works really well if you are very smart with your fat math facts. You just know your multiplication tables, you know your division facts really fast. This may be the easier way to go. So if I say to you, does 3 fifths equal 21 over 35? You could say, okay, well, how do I go from 3 to 21? What do I multiply by? It's 7. 3 times 7 is 21. Well, five times what is 35? It's also seven. If I have a common multiplier, it means I'm multiplying by the exact same number, and that's enough information to get to you to say, hey, that does form a proportion. Even if you worked backwards and you said, okay, well, 21 divided by seven is three. 35 divided by seven is five. That's the same exact idea. So if you can find that common multiplier, it's good. Now, if this numerator was multiplying by seven and the denominator is multiplying by six, then it wouldn't be a proportion. Second one, cross products. Now cross products works every single time, no matter what. So let's say you had a proportion and you could not figure out a common multiplier, cross products. You multiply diagonally and you set those values equal to each other. And if they're equal to each other, then it's good, it's a proportion. If you get different answers, then it would be no good. So here, I would do three times 35 equals five times 21. I cross multiply, okay, cross products. Three times 35 is 105. Five times 21 is also 105. If I get the same answer, then that means yes. Now, we, of course, we already knew it was yes from this, but I'm just showing you the different strategies. So if we use cross products, we multiply diagonally, see if those values equal each other, we're good, that's it. Simplifying the ratios. Now this one could be something that, again, if you're not sharp with your math facts, which we need to be guys, this could be a little bit difficult. Three fifths, that's already simplified. So there's really nothing to do there. But 21 over 35, those can both be simplified by seven. So if I simplify that fraction by seven, I get three fifths. And if I simplify my fractions and I notice I get the exact same thing, three fifths equal three fifths, then again, I know it's good. The last one is converting to decimals, and converting to decimals is always a really easy skill, especially if you've got a calculator ready to go. It would simply be typing in these, these fractions, but as a division operation. So if you were to type into your calculator, 3 divided by 5, not as a fraction, but just simply 3, hit the division key, 5, 
you are going to get the decimal of 0 0.6. If I type in 21 divided by 35, so 21, division key, 35, I'm going to also get the exact same decimal value. And if I convert the decimals, then it's good. So cross products is always good. That's easy. Decimals is always good. That's always easy. Strategy one and three, you just have to really know your math facts, and then you can do that with no problem. So now that we know what a proportion is supposed to be like, two fractions that equal each other, we're going to now solve proportions. And to solve a proportion, I generally always encourage my students to use cross products. However, sometimes proportions can easily be set up uh, solved using the common multiplier as well. So if you're making the connection from denominator to denominator or a numerator to numerator, totally go for it. So here, if I wanted to use the strategy of cross products, a way that I determined whether or not something even formed a proportion, to solve for x, this is what it would look like. 5 times 9.6 and then 6 times x. If I multiply those directly across, 5 times 9.6 is here. 6 times x is here. 5 times 9.6 is 48. 6 times x is 6x. And then I do my one-step solving equation skills, divide both sides by 6. And the answer is 8. Now, guess what would happen? If I typed in 5 divided by 6 into my calculator, I'm going to get 0.83 repeating. Guess what would happen if I typed in 8 divided by 9.6? I'm going to get the exact same answer, 8.3, I'm sorry, 0.83 repeating. So it's going to confirm to me that I get the exact same decimal value. I know it's got to be good. All right. I have four solving proportion problems with you. They all have a little bit of a different skill, so hang tight with me. First one, 28 over 49 equals 4 over W. You can see I drew my diagonal arrows because I'm going to cross multiply. So I'm going to do 28 times W equals... 49 times 4. Okay, 28 times W equals 49 times 4. 28 times W is 28W. 49 times 4 is 196. Divide both sides by 28. And 196 divided by 28 is 7. 28 over 49 is equal to 4 over 7. 28 over 49 actually simplifies to 4 sevenths. If I divide these both by 7, I'm going to get 4 sevenths, and so it pretty much makes sense. Next one, same idea. 6 times this 0.51, n times 3. So 6 times 0.51 equals n times 3. So this becomes 3.06 equals 3n. Divide both sides by 3. And n equals 1.02. Now, for these last two, they look a little different because I don't just have... Uh, one term over one term in my ratio. I actually have two terms, x plus 1 over 4. And even in this last one, I've got a minus 4, a plus 2. We haven't seen that yet. So what we have to make sure we do here is we still are business as usual, multiplying 5 times 4. But when we multiply 12 times x plus 1, we have to make sure 12 doesn't just get multiplied to the x. It goes to the x and the 1. So we'd have to make sure 12 multiplies by this entire value here. And it actually needs parentheses. So 5 times 4 equals 12 times this x plus 1. Now this should also then remind you about the distributive property, which is what we need to do next. So we'd have to do 12 times x and then 12 times 1. So 5 times 4 is 20. This becomes 12x plus 12. We've now got a two-step equation. Subtract 12 on both sides, all right, so that we're starting to get x by itself. Divide both sides by 12, last step to get x by itself. And 8 divided by 12 just simplifies to 2 thirds. Last one, same idea. When we cross multiply here, we have to make sure 7 gets multiplied to the entire a plus 2. And 14 gets multiplied to the entire a minus 4. So 7 times that a plus 2 in parentheses is equal to a minus 4 times 14. Now, I put the 14 at the end, but we should know distributive property. It doesn't matter where you put that multiplying number. It can be in front of the parentheses or behind it. That is completely okay. 7 times a is 7a. 7 times 2 is 14. 
And then if I distribute my 14 over there on the right, 14 times a is 14a, 14 times negative 4 is negative 56. You then should know exactly what to do at this point, how to solve a multi-step equation with variables on both sides. You technically can do whatever you want first. So I'm going to go ahead and just subtract 7a on both sides to get 14 equals 7a minus 56. Then I've got constants on both sides, a 14 and a negative 56. I would need to add 56. I'm left with 70 equals 7a. Divide both sides by 7, and a is equal to 10. I hope this, equation, this video was helpful for you. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.